Hi, I'm Jem Galang from GED 0104, Section 14, and in this presentation, I'll be discussing Part 4, The Scientific Revolution of Yuval Harar's book entitled Sapiens. Just a quick note before I start, there are seven chapters in Part 4 of Harar's book, but in this video, I'll be only focusing on Chapter 14, The Discovery of Ignorance. To begin with, what do we mean by scientific revolution? Scientific revolution was a time period in which major scientific and technological advancements were made. It was a series of events that marked the emergence of modern science during the early modern period. In very generic terms, scientific revolution refers to the resurrection of modern day science. What is modern science? Modern science is more dynamic, systematic, malleable, and inquisitive approach to science compared to old or pre-modern science. Harari, the author of the book, states that modern science is different from pre-modern science and from all previous traditions of knowledge in three critical ways. First is willingness to admit ignorance. Modern science is based on the Latin injunction ignoramus, which means we do not know. This suggests that modern science emerged from our willingness to admit our ignorance or our lack of knowledge or wisdom with the things that surround us. So according to Harari, the great discovery that launched the scientific revolution was the discovery that humans do not know the answers to their most important questions. There's two kinds of ignorance behind this statement according to him. First is ignorance towards something important, and next is ignorance towards something unimportant. Oftentimes, when we do not know something, we recognize that we are ignorant of it. Hence, we try to challenge ourselves even more by adding more questions to the problems that we have and by also trying to find answers for them. So that's one of the advantages of using scientific method in the present period of science where we are in. Second, centrality of observation in mathematics. Modern science obtains knowledge through gathering observations and using mathematical tools. So by first admitting that we are ignorant of something, we believe that we can find ways in order to solve any problem that we have. Like what I mentioned earlier, the centrality of observation in mathematics plays a fundamental role in the actual resolution of the problems that we have. Third, the acquisition of new powers. Modern science is also dependent in acquiring new powers. In this context, new powers mean new knowledge, new developments, new discoveries, new theories, new inventions, and new technologies. Acquisition of new powers in modern science means investing resources in scientific research. According to how I understand what I've read, Humans have developed their skills even more by engaging themselves deeply into their studies with the new resources they acquired. Astonishing achievements were made possible through the help of huge investments in scientific research. Harari mentions that knowledge is equal to the theory that enables us to do new things. So knowledge is about utility and it is not about truth according to him. As a matter of fact, the name of Francis Bacon is mentioned in his book to justify what Harari means by that. It says that Francis Bacon argued that knowledge is power, that the real test with knowledge is not whether it is true, but whether it empowers us. Meaning to say, scientists usually assume that no theory is 100% correct. Consequently, truth is a poor test for knowledge. The real test is utility. Meaning to say, a theory that enables us to do new things constitutes knowledge. Yuval Harari also mentioned the name of Isaac Newton to further elaborate how theory and knowledge are interrelated. He said that mere observations are not considered as knowledge. In order to understand the universe, we need to connect observations into comprehensive theories. This is exactly what scientists seek to accomplish. In 1687, Isaac Newton published The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, which is arguably the most important book in modern history. Newton presented a general theory of movement and change. 
There are three mathematical laws that Newton came up with. The first law states that a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will remain in motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. The second law states that the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object times its acceleration. The third law states that for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction, meaning to say if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B will exert an equal but opposite force on object A. These are the three laws mentioned in the book. To conclude, the greatness of Newton's theory, according to Harari, was its ability to explain and predict the movements of all bodies in the universe from falling apples to shooting stars by using three very simple mathematical laws. Moving on, Yuval Harari also believed that science is also shaped by economic, political, and religious interests. As a matter of fact, he mentioned this in his book saying how science is related to economics, politics, and religion. Here are some examples regarding what he said in his book. But Harari emphasizes that science is not inherently leaning more on moral and spiritual. It is definitely not heading towards that. Rather, it is shaped more by economic and political interests. However, Yuval Harari ended the chapter by saying that religion, economics, and politics have a great influence on the field of science. Lastly, he ended by saying these two statements. In short, scientific research can flourish only in alliance with some religion or ideology. The ideology justifies the costs of the research. In exchange, the ideology influences the scientific agenda and determines what to do with the discoveries. And the last one, we have to take into account the ideological, political, and economic forces that shape physics, biology, and sociology, pushing them in certain directions while neglecting others. Thank you.